Today on Nathan and Landon Do Business, we attempt to send a scourge of ghosts to what I believe is the real life Scrooge McDuck. How's that for you? Intrigued? I am intrigued. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear about As someone you... swimming through their money bin and piles of coins. <laughs> just just wait. Just wait. Your mind has not even begun to be blown yet. Um, because uh yeah, I, I as I told you before, I uh I went down a little rabbit hole earlier today and uh I haven't recovered fully since. So just to bring everybody else up to speed. Last week, so first of all, <laughs> I'm so excited I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm Landon of Nathan and Landon Do Business. I'm the one who's been talking so far. You've been hearing my voice. And hey, with Landon? Me. <laughs> me, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I have descended from the mountaintop. And here I, I am how, now. I don't know how we scored that get there. <laughs> <laughs> you got a great agent, Nathan. Yeah. He's me. <laughs> so I'm I'm Landon. And with me is professional baseball scout, Nathan. That's me. I've toured the country, hanging out at all the baseball diamonds, looking for new talent, yeah. shooting them up full of steroids. Are the other baseball players still hot of uh, amphetamines? They're they like getting reds and uppers and whatnot. Oh, you know it. That's, that's just uh, how you say hi to people is hand them a handful of pills. <laughs> don't even hand them you just you walk up to them and throw them on your way up there as you're about to shake their hands scatter them like you're feeding chickens <laughs> like you're in a parade <laughs> Throw, throwing candy at major league baseball players reds for everyone so uh that's us we're nathan and landon we're here to do business big business ghost business <laughs> as we discussed last week so just to bring everyone everyone up to speed if this is your first time watching this which it's almost guaranteed that it is. And Nathan, I have a feeling this one, this is the one that's going to take us over the top, Nathan. This like where we uh, break through. This is where we break through. Like the Sylvester Stallone movie that bears that name, Over the Top. We are about to be over the top. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> so get, get that one. <laughs> uh, get that move and then. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> how did no one else think of that before sylvester stallone is what i want to know it's just a, a arm wrestling savant as i've always said <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like what i want to see in the i, I want to make a director's cut of that movie where there's a hundred percent more shocked reaction <laughs> shots of people just looking at that move and be taking it back it's like 10 minutes of just random people in the audience oh <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> he took it over the top. <laughs> How did we not think of this until now? <laughs> He's not going to be driving truck no more. <laughs> no. He's making that arm wrestling money, which I assume is makes a lot of money. <laughs> if you're a, an innovator in the space like he is, maybe. <laughs> exactly. I assume it's like a multi-level marketing scheme where it's like the one arm wrestler at the top is the one that makes all the money. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is just begging for scraps. <clears throat> um, anyways, yeah, we're, we're doing big deals here. So investors out there who are watching this, I know you might be worried about the commercial real estate bubble, uh, but don't because Nathan and I are here to, uh, to rescue you. So uh, last week, just feel free to go back and click on the last video. We came up with this hybrid extortion slash uh, ghost imprisonment scheme where we would potentially either populate vacant <laughs> real commercial real estate buildings with ghosts and or unleash ghosts on wealthy businessmen to force them to hand over their money to us it's it's going to be great we're going to have either way we're going to have a prison of ghosts that we can unleash for profit and fame and fortune and fun <laughs> and fun yeah <laughs> the real business are the ghost friends we made along the way yeah, <laughs> yeah. but nathan i'm so excited um I was doing a bit of uh, wasting time, as they say, on the internet, and uh, I stumbled across a man who I believe can either be a business partner for this venture or a target. Um, 
<laughs> so I'm just going to throw a name out there. Have you ever heard of the name uh, Dan Pena before? Does he have a, a fancy little uh, tilde over his name? He does, yeah. <laughs> it's like a little cape. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall that name, no. So how I came across this man is I was looking at a website known as reddit.com. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Is that www.reddit.com? The one and only. <laughs> if you're feeling fancy, you can put an HTTPS in front of it. Um, <laughs> in any case, the clip I saw was basically like almost like a real life Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross moment where it was this man, Dan Pena, saying he doesn't care if your mother died in your arms that day. He wants to see your weekly business report. And he was, it, not, not only what did he say like that, he was pacing and cursing. And I saw that clip and I was just so taken aback by it. I had to go down a rabbit hole to uh, figure out who this guy is. And so and I tried to find the clip of that. It has since been scrubbed from the internet, which leads me to believe this man may or may not be litigious because it was on Reddit one minute and gone the next. So there's a high likelihood we might get sued by this. But uh, I'm not super worried about it because, you know, like all of 20 people see this. But if Dan Pena does see this, this might be the thing that launches us to superstardom. Are you familiar with the Streisand effect? I am familiar with that, yeah. Maybe we use that to our advantage. So, okay, here we go. I'm just going to show you some vi some video clips I've compiled. So here is uh, here's one. <laughs> so apparently uh, there's some context for this clip is... Uh, Joe Rogan came across this guy, you know, Joe Rogan, you know, also not the brightest guy. Um, and he made some offhand remark like, oh, wow, this guy, he looks pretty old. He's probably dead. And so that small offhand remark from Joe Rogan prompted this response from Dan Pena, which I've cleaned up because, like I said, the, the language is absolutely vulgar. <laughs> but this is this is Dan Pena. Hello, Joe. My name's Dan Pena. I'm still a formidable force at 61225. And if you think that I'd say the most formidable force in this man's life is the worst formidable, the word formidable. You know, that wasn't like, this isn't done in one take either. Like that's the best they got out of him. For, exactly. Formidable. It's fine. Yeah. 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 Dan, what I want to know is what he said in the other takes that was like yeah. way worse than formidable. Yeah. It's like homophobic slurs or something. Exactly. No, there's plenty of these in there too. Don't worry about that. Still a formidable force at 6'1", 225. And if you think that I'm almost dead and I'm not going to be alive anymore, ask this bear that I killed with a knife not too long ago. I'm still a very tough guy. At what is that number he gave? 6'1", 225? Is I that his that address? <laughs> Either that or it's his height and his weight. Um, which to uh, me, yeah, like... like if if you're you're so fast. who cares yeah. i'm at 61225 like a maple avenue like what is <laughs> yeah that's where only tough guys live yeah. <laughs> 6122 type badass lane it's a formidable address i think giving his address and like challenging all comers to bare knuckle boxing i would be more intimidated by that than I killed this bear. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, I feel like he uh, maybe 30 years ago read like heard that ballad of Davy Crockett and internalized that now <laughs> believes it's him. Maybe this is this is the future of Davy Crockett. <laughs> After killing him at bar when he was only three, <laughs> he turned now into I'm a weird old man. <laughs> who yells at podcasters? <laughs> yeah. Listen up, jerk. I grinned down this bear when I was only three. <clears throat> All right. Let's continue. 71, I take no bullshit in person or on the YouTube. I'm not dead and I'm so, Well, I'm sorry. So the fact that he calls it the YouTube leads me to believe he's yeah. going to die next week. I love using a definite article for things that don't require it. Like exactly. old people do the YouTube. I love that. <laughs> that that's his death omen. He's going to die tomorrow. Like I always refer to our college experience is attending the BYU. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I call it to make it sound even more old timey? The BY. <laughs> the BYC. Yes. Or Academy, right? The BYA. The BYA. Yeah. That's how you sound super old timey. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about all the bears you killed back then. Yeah. Back then, the BY was about 50% bears. We had to kill them to get to class. All right, let's hear more about what this man has to say. Still a very tough 
guy. At 71, I take no bullshit in person or on the f YouTube. I'm not dead and I'm plenty alive and I don't give a f what anybody says about me. I rip people's head off and shit down their neck. And <laughs> See, I love how the main point he's made of like at least two or three times is I'm not dead. Yeah. Look how not dead I am. <laughs> Can you hear by the shouting sounds I'm making? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> also, it sounds like he just is claiming to have murdered people. <laughs> yeah, it does sound that way. This is this is like confession tape or something. Exactly. I wonder if this is admissible in court. You remember Jimmy Hoffa? I know where he's buried. <laughs> yeah. You'll find him headless with my shit down his neck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, school, the police are like, we have noticed a lot of rash of killing with, with headless bodies and defecation down their necks. Maybe yeah. this is our guy. <laughs> One tough guy to another tough guy. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared to use my stuff on your podcast. It's all free you ask me why do you give it away free dan i give it away free to take the last excuse away from the sorry why they can't fulfill their dreams i'm calling so, you out joe you think you're so this makes this 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 is like i'm, I'm saying this now on the podcast dan pena you can't sue us because you said we can use your stuff for free yeah. so feel free to threaten to murder me with your bear knife but <laughs> you, you can't sue me is he like is he a motivational speaker on the side is that what's going on? <laughs> just wait <laughs> just wait we've only begun to scratch the surface with this guy <laughs> i have a treasure trove of information to talk you through okay. so, so dig this so i gotta go back a little bit because this is my favorite part i'm calling you out joe you think you're a tough guy you haven't met me i'm the 50 billion dollar man and this is my lair <laughs> So, what do you think? It's layer. And then cut to like a, is that a drone shot or a CG rendering of his house? I couldn't tell. <laughs> I think it's a, either a drone shot or the biggest crane shot I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> He's a $50 billion man, so I just imagine he can afford a crane like that. So He's the $50 billion man. <laughs> oh, but, but now he's the $50 trillion man. Oh, um, is he now? Yeah, he's promoted himself to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Did he beef uh, up his layer at all. <laughs> he, he moved it to beneath a volcano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I saw this and I was immediately intrigued. I had the same thought you did. I was like, how the hell is this guy making his money? Because yeah. it's not entirely clear. So first, I went to Wikipedia. And this is all Wikipedia. Guess, but... <laughs> Exactly. He gets paid by you know every profanity he shouts, which I don't know, kind of odd. odd. Got to yeah. deal with the government. So um, he started his career, as it says here, as a financial analyst on Wall Street. You know, kind of vague. He went on to become the president of Great Western Resources Inc., a Houston-based oil company listed on the London Stock Exchange in '84. In a move backed by shareholders, Pena was ousted as president of the company in 1992. So he was kicked out of his company. Yeah. Um, in 84, he bought Guthrie Castle in Angus, Scotland. I think that's his lair that he was referring to, was that uh, that castle area. Yeah. Um, in 2017, the castle on a statement, oh, so, yeah, so one of his uh, one of his guys was charged for fraud. That's all it says about his business, like that he owns a castle and he was fired from his oil company. Right. So not wanting to end there, I asked uh, Derek, the world's <laughs> sexiest robot, to dig up some information for me about uh, our friend Dan Pena here. So I said, okay, hey, Derek, tell me everything you know about entrepreneur Dan Pena. And Derek says, so <laughs> we got to dig into this because I think uh, Derek might have been radicalized by alt-right people on YouTube. <laughs> he thinks Dan Pena is a pretty cool dude. <laughs> so he says, uh, where do I start with the $50 billion man, Dan Pena? <clears throat> well, first off, he's not your typical entrepreneur. He's a bit of an eccentric, and that's putting it mildly. He's known for his high energy, no nonsense approach to business with his blunt demeanor. He's the type of guy who will call you out on your BS and tell you to quit whining and get to work. So at this point, he could be like the manager of 31 Flavors for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's super vague stuff. Yeah, he's the guy who's like, who tells you if there's time to lean, there's time to clean. Right. So here we go. <clears throat> 
here we get a bit more information. As for his background, he's a self-made billionaire who made his fortune primarily in the oil industry, which we know. He's also known for being a high-performance coach who helps people unlock their full potential and achieve their goals through his Quantum Leap Advantage program. Yeah. <laughs> he sent Scott so, Bakula back in time. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's, he's the one behind the Quantum Leap technology, which is incredible. <laughs> yeah. So I asked Derek, I was like, okay, Derek, what exactly is the Quantum Leap Advantage? And Derek says, the Quantum Leap Advantage is a program uh, is, is a program is a high performance coaching program created by Dan Pena. The program is designed to help people achieve their most ambitious goals in life, whether those goals are related to business, relationships, health, or personal growth. The program is known for being very intense and immersive. Participants spend several days at Pena's castle in Scotland at his lair, where they receive one-on-one -on -one coaching from Pena himself, as well as from other successful entrepreneurs and business leaders. So... <laughs> He just basically gets you in his castle and shouts at you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, how much people are paying to go be yelled at by an octogenarian. Oh, so, so, Derek, so Derek didn't give me a precise number on that, but he says the cost of the program is quite high. And apparently Pena is known for being selective about who he accepts into the program. So very expensive and artificial scarcity of people he's going to let in and not let in. He challenges them to wrestle one together. If you can't pin me, I'm not going to yell at you. Dude, you have no idea how close to the mark you are. Do you, do you want to see some more clips of Please. Penya yelling? Okay. So I, I, there's a ton of clips out there of him shouting if you go on the internet. And you, it's it's hilarious. I encourage you to do it. Do it on incognito mode because you don't need this nonsense clutter cluttering up your YouTube algorithm. Um, but uh I pulled this example because I feel like pulling it back to our business case, I feel like it's relevant to what we're trying to achieve here. It gives you a sense of his demeanor in the class and also his worldview a little bit. So some context, he's talking, his clip, he's yelling at his class about a near-death experience his wife had at his son's wedding rehearsal. <laughs> when first we get his little slate here. I forgot to edit this out, so. <laughs> I saw every regret since I'm born till I fell dead in my son's rehearsal dinner flashed before me in a hundred millionth of a second. Every regret she ever had. We're all energy kids. I like that guy's the smartest one in the room. Who's just yeah. like, no, nah. <laughs> we're done here. <laughs> every regret she ever had, she saw in a millionth of a second flash before her. And that's what I've been telling people for 55 years. And the only reason I'm the way I'm gonna find out is if I gotta die myself first and be brought back. So if you think that when you die, it's all over, it ain't. Okay, two things. This man's vocabulary is terrible. Yeah. Second, if we send ghosts after him, he is gonna believe it. He is yeah, a for sure A plus is. mark. <laughs> He apparently has proof of the afterlife. So. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe he's going to pitch his book, Heaven is for Real, for Real Part 2. But it's written by a very old man instead of a very young man. Yeah. And uh, it's just laced with profanity. <laughs> and poor vocabulary. Exactly. So that's it gives you a sense of the Dan Pena experience. So... <laughs> Do you want to see what happens at the end of the Dan Pena seminar? I do. Presented with no commentary whatsoever. <laughs> you have boy fighting. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> as he rubs his hands together in glee <laughs> yes and, and then later he takes the losers out and hunts them for sport apparently yeah so he makes them box yeah so landon i know you're a boxer um yeah. how would you describe that form there because as a lay person I was unimpressed. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot more flailing than I would have liked to have seen. <laughs> hey, hey. 
it was uh the, the style i call you know with the windmill style it's like if yeah. you come towards me you're gonna get hit and it's your own fault right <laughs> it was abundantly clear that neither of those men really wanted to hurt each other yeah <laughs> they were not hitting with bad intentions I was really worried that both of them were going to get hurt pretty seriously since they're going in there with literally no training. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little disappointed they're not boxing Dan himself. But <laughs> I was hoping for like a, a Teddy Roosevelt type experience where like he puts on a monocle and some really yeah. high-waisted shorts and gets in there. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's Dan Pena. Um, any questions? <laughs> Uh, we definitely need to send ghosts after this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and and um, just before we move into this, like Mr. Pena, if you see this, I know I'm a loser and a coward. Like all those things, if you tell them to me, I know them already and I accept it. So you, you can't hurt me and it's fine. <laughs> so you're way tougher and richer than me. It's cool, but we're going to send ghosts after you. <laughs> <laughs> How many ghosts you have on that payroll, Dan? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no ghosts in the world can 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 uh, no 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 no, no um, horrible amateur boxer can stop our legion of ghosts. They're they're coming for you. Um, you no, know, it is a so, thing for insecure people to always have that shot of them standing in front of cars, which I've never really <laughs> understood. Like, maybe if I was a car guy, I'd be impressed by them. I'm like, oh yes, you own five automobiles good for you i mean yeah well done i guess <laughs> you know what i'd be more impressed is if it was a live bear behind him or several live animals just standing behind yeah. him <laughs> if he was actively fighting bears i'd be much more intimidated by his formidable <laughs> tactics than just watching him stand there look at me stand by cars <laughs> aren't you intimidated dan Pena, car owner <laughs> You know, we should do that, Nathan. We should the next video we make, our intro video, should be us standing in front of our vehicles. <laughs> Look at Look my at minivan. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my minivan and my my Nissan Sentra. <laughs> Behold. Behold my Honda Civic and weep. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me to the grocery store, usually without incident. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did like his face when it wasn't even a knockdown. Like it was just basically this guy stumbled backwards onto the canvas. Yeah. He was just filled with glee. <laughs> that man being hurt. Excellent. <laughs> Your blood will feed my evil runes. <laughs> You've learned all the things that I've taught you by falling backwards like that. <laughs> yeah. God. Oh, yeah. So let's um let's pitch him. Let's, yeah. let's write him a pitch letter. Um, absolutely <laughs> i'm thinking we do it as always with the assistance of derek our trusty robot the world's sexiest ai yeah <laughs> he's doing great all right let's see here oh this reminds me last last week i asked derek uh the types of ghosts there are <laughs> tell me every ghost archetype and uh yeah he, he did he did a very good job okay so let's see all right derek we're writing a letter to Dan Pena. These are the points we want to make. Make sure you open a new chat for maximum sassiness. <laughs> I'm going to use my same uh, Derek. Oh, yeah, that's true. I will. Yeah. That gives, the sass tends to wear off after a while. Yeah. Poor little Derek gets tuckered out. <laughs> he does. He gets all tired. It reverts back to his original open AI programming. Yeah. All right. What are the beats we want to make? We're impressed by your vehicle ownership. We are Nathan and Landon. At the uh, stuffed bear that you have in your home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are impressed at your stuffed bear. Vehicle ownership. And castle. Stand and castle. What's what? He called it a lair, right? Yeah. Castle slash lair. Um, as vehicle and lair. How about vehicle and castle ownership? <laughs> there you go. And overall bloodlust. 
I I do want to ask him if he has any tips on layer maintenance. <laughs> yes. Inquire on tips for layer maintenance. <laughs> As ours is falling apart. Because yeah. <laughs> mostly we want to <laughs> intimidate him with a formidable host of ghosts. <laughs> We're like ghosts with the most host. Okay, we are Nathan and Landon, business geniuses and ghost owners. <laughs> I prefer ghost enslavers. <laughs> Perfect. Ghost enslavers. We're here to threaten you <laughs> with an offer you shouldn't refuse. Okay, so we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to flatter him with his stuffed bear, vehicle and gas ownership, and overall bloodlust as you watch untrained combatants lightly <laughs> pummel each other. <laughs> All right. But, but, but first, inquire and tips for Lair Main. This is ours is falling apart. All right. <clears throat> All right, what do we want to threaten him with? Or what do we want from this man? His yeah, billions that's, that's of dollars? Question. Yeah. His blimp? You know that guy's a blimp. Yes. Yes. Let's just say, like, we know you fear the afterlife. <laughs> and all the horrors that accompany it. All the horrors that accompany it. In somewhere between one millionth and one hundred millionth of a second. He was kind of vague on that point. Yeah. It's scientific. <laughs> yeah. You've done some. You've done. You've done some shit. Yeah, he clearly has. You've done some shit, Dan. And it's coming home to roost. Now we, we got to let him know we've met with business Jesus. Yes, business Jesus, and he has agreed to give us one point five million hosts of purgatory um, in exchange for money and I don't know a proposal of purgatory there we go we are going to turn them loose on you Dan unless they're you give us for you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming to get you Dan <laughs> alright this is where we get to the good part agree to give us okay we want it we, first we want um what did you say earlier we want from Dan? We, we want his... Uh, blimp access. <laughs> access to your blimp. I don't want to own my own blimp. That would be a lot of work, I think. But Which, which we assume you own. <laughs> um, our own room in your castle. Yeah. We don't want the castle because we no. don't want to maintain the lair. Our own room in your castle. Two you said it's castle, a, like in guitar. Scotland. What? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a Scottish castle. I think so. Yeah. See, that might be haunted on its own. So we need to explain how our ghosts will destroy his built-in ghosts and his layers. Oh, <laughs> good idea. Yeah. Because we have First, I want to write... Jesus on our side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say you might think that your castle is already haunted, haunted, and it could defend itself against our ghost no way dude our ghosts are way more powerful and have the backing of the most badass businessman in the, in the galaxy <laughs> and in the universe big jesus <laughs> big papa jays i call him <laughs> Big business Jesus or Big Papa J. <laughs> As we have come to call him. As he demands that we call him. <laughs> That's a better one. As he demands that we call him. Perfect. All right, back to our wish list. So we're asking for access to his plan. Our, our own room in your castle. Two kick-ass electric guitars. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Um, I think for the sake of the perpetuated self, he needs to give us like all the dirt he has on other business people. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. The dirty secrets you have on other business people. Um, let's see. Let's ask for an air hockey table. <laughs> that should be in the rooms that we have in his castle. <laughs> <laughs> definitely along with our two kick ass electric yeah. guitars <laughs> private room in your castle slash layer furnished <laughs> with air hockey table <laughs> furnished, with, furnished with an air hockey table <laughs> and some kick ass guitars perfect we want the dirty secrets you have um i kind of want to um oh, i lost my train of thought there what i would like is uh to box him yes <laughs> yes <laughs> but first let's just go over the the financial things let's let's do that and then we can get into other demands yeah. um is anything for other physical or material we want from this man i can't oh I, do you, what about like a fancy hat? I bet he has a ton of fancy hats. He probably has a whole haberdashery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. A bunch of fancy hats that we commission from your private haberdasher. We can make a montage of us trying on fun hats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Oh, okay. Hats. Um, let's see. I think this is then the end. Also, like uh, twenty five of your fifty billion dollars. Yeah, that rounds it out nicely. See, by the end when he gets to the to the money request, he'll be like, "Oh, okay, that's fine. I'll yeah. still have twenty five billion dollars left, and I won't be haunted." Right. Okay. So here are the beats. We introduce ourselves. We tell him how impressed we are about him, and then we inquire for tips on layer maintenance. And we live, we remind him that he fears the afterlife. And then we go through our list of demands. And then we remind him that you, even though your house might already be haunted, our ghosts are way more powerful because they have the backing of Big Papa Jay. <laughs> Jesus demands that we call him. <laughs> great, great. Okay. Lastly, I'm really hoping you'll box me. I'm a big, weak baby and would love to be pummeled at your, at your mighty hands. <laughs> at your mighty bear killing hands, bear murdering hands. Okay, great. Okay. What, anything else you want to say that to, to, we, we close it before like do the right thing? <laughs> Our standard demands for people. <laughs> <laughs> do the right thing dan don't let don't let these ghosts run wild on you <laughs> all right let's see what let's see what derek's comes up with based on these beats oh my goodness Okay, Derek's doing a great job here. Um, he always does. <laughs> yeah. He's he's like the the uh, the the Jarvis to our proverbial Iron Man. He's just yeah. he's always he's always just nails it. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Yeah. Okay, dear Dan Pena, we Nathan and Landon have been following your impressive business career and obsessions with blood and stuffed bears. We <laughs> believe that you might be interested in offer. You can't refuse. Firstly. Could you please be so kind as to share some tips for lair maintenance? <laughs> Our own is falling apart, and we could use the advice of a successful lair owner such as yourself. <laughs> we have also become aware of your fear of the afterlife and understand that you may have done things you are not proud of. As such, we would like to offer you a way out of this mess. We recently met with Big Business Jesus, who has kindly agreed to give us access to 1.5 million hosts of purgatory. If you fail to comply with our request, we will release these spirits and they will be free to cause you all sorts of chaos and misery. However, if you agree to the terms we propose, we will leave you alone. Namely, we are requesting access to your blimp, which we assume you own, our own room in your castle, 
or air furnished with air. We need to clean that up. <laughs> furnished with air hockey table and some kick-ass guitars. All the dirty secrets, secrets you have on other business people. A bunch of hats commissioned from your private haberdashery. 25 of your $50 billion. And last but not least, for you to box me. <laughs> I need to clean that one up because I want yeah. to make it clear that I'm a very weak baby right. that he shouldn't fear. All right. We understand you have a wealth defended castle rumored to be haunted. However, our ghosts are far superior, having the backing of big business Jesus himself. Trust us when we say that you don't want to challenge the ghosts, to want, to, want to challenge ghosts with that level of support. We hope that you will take our offer under consideration and agree to our terms. Please do the right thing, Dan, and let's avoid any unnecessary paranormal chaos. Your brothers in Christ, Nathan and Landon. Not bad. Yeah. Well done, Derek. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and pull this up really quickly because I have already found the email address to Dan Pena's personal assistant. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. He published it on Twitter. <laughs> All right, here, there we go. Oh no, got to get the formatting out of there. Just a minute. Let me give you some hold music here while I remove this formatting. Ba -da -da. Ba -da -da. Ba -da -ba -da. Okay, dear Daniel. There we go. All right. Don't forget the fancy cape on the end. Oh yes. You're right. Momentito. I don't know the shortcut to do it, so I'm just going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. And then I'm going to go like this. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like it bigger though. <laughs> like, <I know. laughs> where the stress is Pena. <laughs> <laughs> you're right see viewers and hopefully dan pena if you're watching this this is the kind of entertainment you get when you tune into this channel me struggling with font formatting because <laughs> i am not going to edit this all right so this is good this is good i need to change uh our own room your castle complete with air hockey table there we go and some kick-ass guitars. There we go. And lastly, I need to go back into what I gave Derek in the first place. Because I like what I said better about being about boxing him. Yeah. There we go. All right. I think we need to keep Big Papa J, too. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know why agree. Derek dropped that. Come on, Derek. I need to give him some feedback. Okay, let's delete this. <laughs> Your mighty bear murdering hands. That's great. Derek, yeah. why did you mess with success? Yeah. Or Big Papa J, as he demands we call him. <clears throat> oh, and I got to take out best regards. But brothers in Christ. There we go. All right. Yeah, we are a team. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping that'll get him to respond to us. If yeah. we did. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Wham. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I think this is this is feeling really good, Nathan. I feel like um, I feel like this is I feel like we're gonna get his attention. Oh, we can put a subject line. Urgent, urgent ghost matter. <laughs> Please reply soon. <laughs> that should hopefully get his attention. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Should I click send? I think Tom will be very excited to uh, receive this email. <laughs> I think he'll be excited too. Yeah. All right, here I go. Ready? Three, do it. Two, one. And go. Oh, wait. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> While we're here, let's go back to our memory lane. 
Remember the time RC Cola sent us a newsletter? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Nathan and Landon. We were a team. All right. <clears throat> well, Nathan, I, just so you know, I'm going to be clicking refresh on Gmail until Mr. Daniel Pena responds to us. And I will keep you apprised on progress. But uh, I feel well, like this is the excellent yeah. work in finding this man. <laughs> you know. I felt like this is this is the most important episode of this ramshackle podcast that we've ever recorded. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I I I mean Dan Dan Penny, if you're watching this, I know you can take us to new heights of success. New heights, not the old heights. No. New heights of success. Um, so please write to us. Have mercy on us. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I would love nothing more. I'll just stand in the back and rub my hands and glee. <laughs> oh, we got to get you a suit with a little chain in the front like he had right there. Yeah. Like the nice double-breasted suit with the vest and a little wallet chain that goes across the front. Maybe we could have you cosplay as Dan Pena. You should be Dan Pena for Halloween. Oh, we should. <laughs> we should both be Dan Pena for Halloween. I'll be Dan Pena. You can be a stuffed bear. <laughs> <laughs> you just carry me. I stabbed this thing. <laughs> yeah what we got to get before halloween though is uh is a blimp <laughs> so, <laughs> we can just float around the city shouting profanities at people um yeah. that's the other thing C proceed with caution anyone who's watching this on his youtube channel because he says some very very offensive things um so uh yeah proceed with caution he is a he is not a good person he is a he is a garbage bag human being um so <laughs> That's why we're sending our legions of ghosts after him. So exactly, yeah. Um, hey, if you heard that, Dan, I didn't mean it. You're lovely. Just kidding. He's trash. <laughs> you didn't hear that, Dan. Uh, you're a very old man. Okay. Well, Nathan, as always, thank you for embarking on us today to make carry out this important work. Um, and I, I think we're going to be hearing back from him very soon. So. And, and viewers, say a little prayer that Dan Pena reaches out to us, has mercy on us. Say and, a little uh, prayer to business, Jesus. <laughs> to, to Big Papa Jay, that, uh, that Big Dan Pena is going to respond to our email, make our business dreams come true. Um, <laughs> so as always, I have been Landon. I continue to be Nathan. And uh, keep killing those bears, Dan. You're doing great. Take care. <laughs>